All right, let's get that gauge logging accurately so we can tune your car. First, you want to start the car, let it warm up, and then begin a log. And I'm sorry I might be rushing through this a little bit, but this uh, app that I, I downloaded to my computer only gives me 10 minutes. So, all right, begin the log, or don't begin the log, just connect and link, rather, to your car's computer, and then pull up your ECU config live settings. Then go down to ECU inputs, Select connected sensor from the drop down menu where you have the wideband wired into. Mine's on the rear O2. Then you'll select linear wideband and that's going to allow you to input your own values to get it to log accurately. You can add to this display name whatever you want. That way you, uh, when you look in your logs, it says whatever you want it to say. And then you'll hit save pin assignments and then go to captured values and I can't do it now because I'm not connected to my computer my car the, right now but you'll just click save pin assignments then captured values and add this to the captured values in your log then click save to ECU down here and then begin a log so once you start logging it'll look like something like this you don't need to see all these different values being logged so go ahead and hit control Q, that'll make everything disappear, then right click the log. Go to displayed values, and that's where you'll find your new linear wideband gauge here in, avail uh, in available values. So double click it, and then go to raw value, and you'll also want to add the raw voltage value being logged, and that's here enter the raw values that you can add. So you'll want to double click this value as well as well and hit OK. And that'll add those two things to your log. Now don't pay attention to this log value. I know mine shows correctly. That's because I used this log to calibrate my gauge. So this is going to be a funky AFR. You're going to want to really pay attention to your gauge in, in the car and this value right here, this voltage value. So assuming my my voltage or my gauge in my car is displaying a 14.7 AFR right now because it's in closed loop, you can double click this linear wideband uh, displayed value and it will pull up this menu. Now in this menu on the right side, you'll see a bunch of different things you can change to calibrate it to read correctly. Right now your car is in closed loop while it's idling warmed up. So we can do the 14.7 the value right now pretty easily. 14.7 is the max you want this to read. A 14.7 value in Lambda is 1. Found that by going to this table right here. Go ahead and find a 1 Lambda and 14.7. All right, so that's how we got that number there for that table. So you put a one in for 14.7, and then this voltage value is taken from this log voltage here. You'll see mine was outputting a, a 2.82 volts, and we'll assume that my gauge in the car was reading a 14.7 AFR on it. That's how I got this value. Now it's time to do the min lambda or the rich AFR reading that we want it to log accurately. I don't care about anything richer than an 11 to 1 AFR. That's how I got this lambda here. We, I log for anything leaner than an 11 to 1, so this is the richest I care about. 0.75 lambda is an 11 to 1 AFR. Go back to this table here, find the 0.75 lambda to 11 to 1 AFR and that's how we got that value. So you got these three values. 1 lambda, whatever voltage your gauge is outputting while it's idling at 14.7 and then this min lambda which is 11 to 1 AFR. Now we need to get your car to basically force your car to idle at 11 to 1 AFR to get this voltage value and to do that just hit apply for now with these three changes, hit apply, hit OK. Now go back to your ECU configuration live settings and go to the miscellaneous tab. Once you go to the miscellaneous tab,
go up to this options table and lock the car in open loop and that's going to force the car to use your SDVE table to get its fuel trims and not using the narrowband simulation that you have. Once you lock it in open loop go ahead and hit save if you have to and that's going to drastically change the car's idle. Now you'll go up to the speed density tab and click track data log. When you click on track data log it's going to start tracking your your uh, live log and show you which cell is being used whatever point in the log it's at. So click track data log and while my car is idling this is the cell being used this load cell. Alright so that's the cell that you're gonna have to make changes to to force your car to idle rich. Now if it's idling at a 14, 14.7 14 you're gonna have to richen it up pretty good. To richen it up you increase this value here in the SD table. To get my car to idle at a, an 11 to 1 AFR I had to increase it all the way to 77. I had to increase mine to 77 to get the the gauge in the car to read an 11 to 1 AFR. Once I got the gauge in the car to read an 11 to 1 AFR by slowly increasing this value, I go back to the captured value or the captured the log being captured. Double click this linear wideband menu again. And now we can change this voltage to reflect the voltage down here that the gauge is outputting to the ECU. So watching the gauge, it's assuming it's idling at an 11 to 1 AFR on the gauge. You find this voltage here in your captured log. Here, see mine's a 1.10 volt. So you put that voltage up here to reflect the 11 to 1 on your gauge. Once you hit apply, hit OK. These settings down here, this linear wideband reading is going to reflect the voltage now and you're done. That's how you calibrate the gauge in the car to read accurately in your logs so you can tune at wide open throttle by just looking at the, the captured log itself and not watching the gauge the whole time.